Hello, my name is Jason Gregerson, and this video is going to be about planes. Alright, so when we first started learning about lines, we learned about one of the special properties of a line, the fact that it has a constant slope, and we're able to use that idea to generate the equation of a line. We're going to do the same thing here with the equation of a plane. We're going to say, what's the special property of a plane that makes it different from other surfaces? And you might look at that and say, well, a plane is flat. Well, what does that mean? Well, one of the ways we can describe that flatness aspect is that there is a thing called a normal vector, and it's a vector that is perpendicular to the plane here. So in other words, if I take any two vectors in the plane, here is a vector in this plane, here is another vector in this plane, there is a vector that is perpendicular to both of those vectors. That guy right here, and we're going to call that guy the normal vector. It's normal to the plane. And the nice thing about a plane is that if I grab this normal vector and I move it anywhere else around the plane, it is still perpendicular to that plane. Okay. So we have this vector that is perpendicular to any other vector that lies in the plane. Now, how can we use that fact to generate the equation of a plane? Well, let's talk about a couple points here. I'm going to generate a point right here at the base of this vector. I'm going to call that the point P have it be equal to x sub 0, y sub 0, z sub 0. And then I'll look at any other point over here that's in the plane. There's my other point in the plane. That's just some point x, y, z. And the real question is, is this x, y, and z in the plane? Well, if it is in the plane, then the vector that goes from p over to this point would also have to be in the plane. That vector would have to lie in the plane. What is that vector? Well, that would be the vector that looks like the displacement vector. So that would be x minus x sub naught, y minus y sub naught, and z minus z sub naught. So if that point is in the plane, this is a displacement vector should be in the plane. And if this vector is in the plane, then it should be perpendicular to the normal vector of the plane. So I'm going to call this normal vector the vector a, b, c, where those are just some real numbers here. And so if my displacement vector is perpendicular to my normal vector, then the dot product of those two vectors should be equal to 0. And now I can start to generate this equation for my plane. If I actually do that dot product, I get a times a x minus x sub naught plus b times y minus y sub naught plus c times z minus z sub naught equal to 0. And this is our equation for the plane. So that's the equation, and you can certainly memorize that guy. But when I, you look at that equation, I want you to see this dot product. I want you to be able to look at that equation and say, if I see that value, I know that my normal vector for that plane is the vector a, b, c. And I know that a point that's on my plane is the point x sub naught, y sub naught, z sub naught. Now that's just one equation of the plane. There's another one we can generate pretty quickly. If we just take our equation here and we distribute the a and we distribute the b and we distribute the c, well, we'll be left with ax minus a times x sub naught plus by minus b times y sub naught plus cz minus c times z sub naught. And then we'll just add all those extra random numbers over to the right-hand side. And we will call all those extra numbers d. And so this is actually another equation of the plane here. We can still easily identify that normal vector as the vector a, b, and c. And now the point is a little bit hidden, and we just kind of gather up all those constants to be this value d. All right, so those are my two equations of the plane. Now, how do we use those guys? Well, first, we want to generate the proper equation given some actual values. So now, for instance, we have we want to find the equation of a plane where we're given this specific point, 1, 2, 0, and we know the normal vector of the plane, which is 3, 2, 1. So all we're doing is plugging these values into that equation of the plane. So the equation for this specific plane would be 3 times x minus 1 plus 2 times y minus 2 plus 1 times z minus 0 equals 0. And we could certainly simplify that guy, or we can just leave it as is. This would be the equation of the plane. So that's how we write the equation if we're given a known point and a normal vector. But we could also 
not be given the normal vector in some specific case, but instead be given two other points, say a point Q and a point R. If we just know those three points, and we know those three points are all in the plane, we don't need to be told what the normal vector is to actually find the equation of this plane. How would we do that? Well, we're basically saying, can I find the equation of the plane if I'm given these three points, P, Q, and R? Now, how do we do that? Well, what we do is we say, if these three points are in the plane, then these two vectors, P, R, and P, Q, are also in the plane. And notice I'm just choosing P, Q, and P, P, R randomly. I could choose P, R, and R, Q, for instance. It would still be two vectors that are in the plane. And if I have these two vectors that are in the plane, they both should be perpendicular to the normal vector. And if I want to find a vector that is perpendicular to other vectors, what I would do is find a cross product. So I can find the normal vector now as the cross product of the vector P, Q cross the vector P, R. So I have three points. I calculate two displacement vectors. I calculate the cross product to give me the normal vector. And now I just use that normal vector with any one of the three points to generate my equation of the plane. So that's kind of the process for finding the equation of the plane if you're given three points.